It's time for the second video in our guide series. Let's talk about the Sorcerer Towers. One thing I want to mention before we begin that we didn't talk about in the previous video is that even though we can farm these events for resources alongside the bandage quest, these items can still be crafted if you find the recipes and resources. This group event in specific is more tailored to farming monastic wine and monastic mead. Now you can choose the money reward after this event if you want to, but most people tend to farm for one or both of these drink items. Now what are these useful for? Well, in any PvE and PvP situation, you'll want to make sure that firstly, your food bar is adequately filled. Speaking from experience, because when I jumped back into the game, I was pretty blind to it, and make sure that you activate one of these drink buffs. Gloria Victus doesn't live by the same survival rules that other games do in the genre. If your food bar runs out, you won't full on starve to death, but you will start to notice some debuffs and limitations. Making sure both of these are up in combat situations is going to ensure you're properly prepared, and there are also lower tiers of drink if you can't afford or farm the monastic. The Sorcerer Tower appears on the map as a group event, and these can pop up in multiple locations as I've come to find out. These are ones you'll more than likely need to do in a party, and I'm about to explain why. I was able to find out that you'll need to be around level 60 to qualify for even getting the rewards on this group event, but in terms of surviving it, your party will probably need really decent gear or need to be around level 70 to 75 plus for your character level. When you first approach the tower, you'll be greeted by enemies known as the undead. They'll be weak to piercing damage, so you'll want to ensure that you use thrust attacks against them. People with spears will be really good here. The weaker mobs will be around level 22, but the main enemy you have to kill is the level 100 Grim Reaper. You should be able to aggro him from the bottom floor, and as soon as you beat him, the event will complete, which makes the Sorcerer Towers one of the quicker events to farm on. Everyone in your party needs to make sure they're within range before the Grim Reaper goes down to get the reward. But even if you have 10 or 15 people with you, everyone should be able to get the completion at the end. Now the main reason you'll need to be in a party is because like I mentioned in the last video, not only will enemies become stronger as they get higher in level, but their AI will start to improve greatly on top of that. And because these Grim Reapers are level 100, I'm sure you can understand what I mean when I say you need to have at least one other person with you or be incredibly efficient at the game. Despite there always being at least two Grim Reapers at the Sorcerer Tower, you'll only ever need to kill one to get the completion. The icon should appear as two swords on the map to indicate it as a group event, and you'll normally see the names of these events so you can know exactly what kind they are. And lastly, when you successfully complete these events, the rewards you can choose will either be 10 monastic wine that provides a 5 minute buff of 30% increased health regeneration, monastic mead which gives you 35% increased stamina regeneration, some alchemy materials used for crafting, or a little bit of silver. It's up to you to choose which one you'd like to receive, but don't worry if you decide to go with the money instead of the drinks. These events are repeatable, just like the bandage quest, so it'll be fine if you decide to go for the money right off the bat. But with that, that's everything you need to know about doing the Sorcerer Towers. Keep in mind that there are other places to farm this monastic mead and wine, which we'll talk about in the future. Wish you all good luck out there, and have a wonderful night or day.